So it will now be uh, Gabriele Tebaldi who can share his screen. So he was the chair of the TC 264 RAP on asphalt pavement recycling. So this will be a different topic, a different material, and we're looking forward to seeing the overview of the work of the committee. So, Gabriele, you uh, can... Sorry, I forgot to, to unmute the, the mic. Just a second yes. that I, I redo the... Now we hear you. Yeah. And, uh, okay. I think that now you also see my presentation. We see it. Yeah, now it's full screen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for the bit. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, to, and especially good evening to the brave people that are uh, st uh, still attending the session. Um, in this presentation, I will make a synthesis of the activity of um, the, the TC264 uh, RAP on astral pavement recycling. Um, our idea was to close the, the activity of the TC in the last July, but unfortunately, uh, the current situation didn't allow it to do that. We are, so we are still waiting um, to do the, uh, the, the final uh, meeting for the last uh, things that we have to do, basically uh, the, to approve the right recommendation and to finish the setup of the um, STAR report. So, uh, what was the mission of the TC? Basically, our TC was set to, of course, to do research on the topic of the recycling. That is a, a, a real uh, open topic in the world of the asphalt technology. And uh, not only, so research, but also uh, the idea was to create a, pound, uh, a point of discussion uh, among academia, agency, designer, and uh, asphalt producer. Basically, to, from one side, to um, collect the needs uh, of research and the need of understanding that come from the uh, practitioner and bringing them um, to the academia to try to find some answer and uh, in the opposite way to uh, take the knowledge that the academia have in the field and transfer them uh, to the practitioner and the designer to improve uh, the technologies of recycling so basically this is the the philosophy that we had to create the tc rep and I think we were quite successfully, successfully on that, it was designed to be like a round table where I could, uh, all the actors of this uh, uh, world uh, were able to meet and uh, the state of the art to write a recommendation and a series of scientific papers that uh, were presented in some conference uh, and uh, a document that we uh, decided to produce that is uh, we call it the research needs statements are in our mind the outcome and the result of the uh, of the discussion that we had in the during the years basically we had one uh, annual meeting every year as a uh, world tc and the TG had several uh, meeting in function of the organization and together we will meet we were meeting also every year for the second time in the cluster meeting this is a minus a tradition for the cluster F the TC uh, membership was uh, quite a successful uh, very uh, quite a lot we started to have a, the, uh, a small TC but at the very soon we found the a lot of interest and we had almost 100 people uh, working uh, actively in the in the, in the different task group and quite uh, differentiated in terms of uh, location of course america and europe were the biggest part but we had people from asia and also from australia and from africa so uh, we were more or less present in all the five continents and uh, the contribution uh, was made uh, 
of course, in a big part for by Wilem uh, members, but we as, uh, we were successful to have a big contribution also from non Wilem members, and hopefully we are uh, hoping that these Wilem these people uh, found interest on that and become soon a Wilem member. And again, another uh, I think, in my opinion, the, uh, quite a success was to bring not only academics and research center, but to, uh, to, uh, we had a 35 percent of uh, active member coming from industry and road agency. Uh, the TC uh, was uh, is because we are still working, we're doing something organized in five task group. Uh, one on cold recycling uh, lead, uh, uh, by Daniel Peraton and Alan Carter from ATS Montreal. Uh, later, I will explain you what it means cold and hot in the in the uh, in the recycling in the asphalt technology. Uh, task group two, not cold recycling, lead by Paul Massac uh, and Mike Rubio, uh, one from Gustave Eiffel University, one from University of Granada. TT3, asphalt binder and additive, lead by Martin Hugner from Hempa, Switzerland, and Augusto Canone Falchetto from University of Alaska Fairbanks. Uh, TG4, life cycle assessment of optimal uh, for optimal uh, reclaimed asphalt usage, led by Tony Perry from University of Nottingham and Yanin Piao from University of New Hampshire, uh, former because in, uh, he just uh, joined a university in China. And uh, the last one, uh, little bit of delay because it was created a few months after the start of the TC, is the uh, TG5 on the degree of binder activation, led by Davide Presti from University of Palermo in Italy and Camilla Vasconcelos from University of São Paulo in Brazil. Uh, we had the idea to have two people for each TG just to make simpler and uh, much effective the activity of the TG, considering that is all volunteer activity and so uh, some time uh, is hard to find uh, time to do that among all the commitment that as academic we have. Uh, let me give you an overview of uh, all the TG activity. Uh, the first one is on cold recycling. What it means, cold recycling? Basically, cold uh, in the asphalt technology means a technique that doesn't require the heating of aggregate uh, to make the, the concrete. So in this way, we need, in the cold way, we need uh, some technique that allow to uh, distribute the asphalt among the aggregates uh, without use the, reducing, the reduction of viscosity created at increasing of temperature. The first technology is a physical technology that is the foaming that consisted uh, that to use the reduction of the surface energy created uh, on the bitumen uh, connected with uh, uh, water and uh, it creates bubbles. Let me show you. This is basically the technology. So we are, it's like the soap bubble. And this bubble blasting. Uh, send the, the drop, uh, the drops of uh, the droplets of bitumen in the mix in the aggregate mixture, and the droplets are collected by the fines, and by the fines, use it as a like a tape inside of the mixture. The second technique to uh, the, distribute the asphalt inside of the mixture is the technique of the emulsion. So, uh, as you know, probably emulsion is an unstable uh, from that, uh, combination between water and uh, which we do element, unstable from the thermodynamical point of view. So, using that, the water is able to bring the, uh, the bitumen inside of the mixture, but when the uh, temperature characteristic and the mechanical uh, characteristic, uh, mechanical movement uh, change, uh, the bitumen um, uh, uh, start a decantation and flocculation and cover the, uh, the, it covers the aggregates. But again, the fines in the mixture are bringing a very important uh, role because they considering that the surface uh, um, area of the fines is 200 times higher than the coarse, 
the fines are again the collector of the uh, and the carrier of the bitumen inside of the mixer. So basically what we have at the end is a uh, partially bounded material. This is a, is a picture of a section of this kind of material that uh, is possible to uh, lay down without eating aggregate. Uh, but this is the it seems everything solved, but there are a lot of uh, open point in, uh, in this technology, basically because everything that is now in the start of the art comes from the hot technology and is more or less adapted by the practitioner. So we have a, a series of uh, points that must be clarified. So the TG1 is specifically uh, investigated uh, one, how the rep characteristics and rep is uh, as for this in definition a big heterogeneity, uh, how the rep characteristic identified by some test developed uh, in a previous Rylian TG can impact the uh, how, uh, can impact the performance of the material. The uh, the second objective was how to uh, properly cure the material because one of the point if you if you have seen my play, uh, comments before the water in both cases is one of the actor and we need that the water leaves the mixture so this process is called curing and there are several uh, comments we said uh, the, the tg picked up three and investigated the influence of the different kind of curing in the final performance in the perspective to select the most appropriate one. Again, uh, there was an evaluation of the two, uh, the different effect of the bitumen and, uh, and the emulsion. And the last objective was to implement a volumetric approach for mixed characterization. Everything with the objective to identify a proper set of tests and curing procedure for the mixed design. Mm -hmm. An internal laboratory test campaign was set quite successful. Europe, United States, Canada, and South America. This is the list of the laboratory, quite a lot. And they worked uh, in the same wrap uh, using the same B2N. Uh, the first outcome, everything is uh, uh, in progress because now uh, the, the TG are looking on the result and try to take out the, the final result. The first outcome was that that is was proven what was expected. So that there is a big influence of the um, curing and the combined it with also the compaction method in the final performance. You can see here how two different methods of curing can produce different uh, level of tensile strength of indirect tensile strength of the material and here again the same the same two method of curing you can see that are uh, making a big difference in the dry performance but not so big in the in the wet and again this can create uh, a difference in the so-called endure um, the um, tensile strength ratio to evaluate the, uh, the, what the effect of the water. So looking on that, the idea is to identify what is the proper one and with the recommendation to, to identify what is the better to, uh, procedure for a, for a, uh, to predict, to have a uh, real prediction of the, uh, or, or proper prediction of the performance. The task group number two was working in the so-called uh, worm technology. Worm te what is the worm technology? Asphalt, uh, the asphalt concrete, the hot recycling consisted to use reclaimed asphalt instead of a part of the natural aggregate and with some technology uh, uh, elements uh, to find the right viscosity and the lubricant effect at different uh, a lower temperature uh, lower temperature to have the proper compaction so here is the clear hot mix asphalt you have basically heating vaporization and drying that uh, lead the material uh, around 180 uh, degree with warm we may have the same process uh, almost 50 60 degree uh, lower uh, Again, the, the task group identified some uh, um, 
point investigation. Basically, uh, the main point was to identify the combination of warm asphalt uh, with different uh, amount of recombinant asphalt con content. Uh, and they investigated compactability, water sensitivity, rutting resistance, stiffness model, and fatigue resistance. The round of uh, again, an interlaboratory testing campaign was set, less laboratory, but still uh, with uh, an effective uh, result. And as a first outcome, um, they found a limit in the um, Reclaimed asphalt content in the mixture to to be at the, uh, to be in line with the, on, uh, in line uh, or at the same level with the expected performance of a um, regular, regular mixture. Basically, one of the big achieve, uh, uh, un, uh, say, uh, answer to the question is that we is possible to use with. Uh, good result, up to 70% of reclaimed asphalt in the mixture. The, I go fast, sorry, but otherwise I will, uh, I will go easily out of time. The uh, task group three investigated the uh, topic of the rejuvenator. Uh, what a rejuvenator? A rejuvenator is a technology to uh, restore Rejuvenation is a technology to restore the characteristic of the bitumen. Bitumen is a product, is a, an element composed by different uh, component, and it changes its uh, uh, composition with the heating, with the oxidation, and uh, with the uh, time. So the technology is to uh, restore to eliminate or to cancel some uh, uh, bad effect of the aging in the bitumen in order to bring him more or less at the same level that an uh, unaged uh, bitumen. This is for uh, the, the purpose of that is for uh, um, for the use of the bitumen inside of the reclining asphalt reducing the uh, the use of the um, virgin, the so-called virgin bitumen. Uh, the, uh, right now, the state of the art uh, identified the effect of the rejuvenation. This is the in this uh, in, with the with two simple tests: penetration and ring and ball. You can see here the effect of the aging from fresh after mixing and the, the, the level of uh, reclaimed asphalt pavement, so the pavement after the uh, milling. And the technology is uh, the, the way to design to use the, uh, the amount of rejuvenator is to bring back these two parameters at the level of uh, a fresh bitumen, as you can see in the different graphs. So, this is what's happened in the life. This is what's happened with the rejuvenator. So from the red binder, increasing the rejuvenator, uh, we put back the, the bitumen at an, uh, in a level of, per, let's say, performance, it's an empirical test, uh, of a fresh bitumen. The objective of the the task group was to have evaluate the effect and to find a common way to do the sample and to evaluate the uh, and to understand the effect of uh, the rejuvenator in the binder and uh, in the binder uh, with an aging uh, effort. So the idea was to age to age the rejuvenator binder in a short term, a long term. Uh, process to understand the effect in the field of this bitumen, uh, old bitumen with the rejuvenator. The interlaboratory test campaign was quite successful. There was a lot of requests. Only this laboratory were able to, um, to participate because the, uh, the limit was uh, um, the amount of reclaimed bit the recovered bitumen available. Uh, so, with that, we were able to uh, give material for all these uh, laboratory spread around the world. And again, the results show that uh, it is partially true that uh, this technology bring back 
the, uh, the, ask the performance of the bitumen at the level of a virgin, uh, of a virgin binder. Can happen, but there is a, some uh, difference and also it's not easy to have uh, a, um, a proper replication of the results. So the scattering in some case uh, is very big among the, the result of the different sabor. This is for um, this is true for these two um, kind of test penetration and uh, um, penetration and ring and ball, but also for a more advanced kind of test that is the rheological test with uh, dynamic uh, shear rheometer. And again, there are some homogeneity, but also some scattering in the, the in the result of from the different labors. So there is still a lot of work to do. And the recommendation planned by the TG will lead to try to solve some of these problems. TG4 was working on life cycle assessment, was a little bit complicated, the activity the life of this uh, TC. So basically the, uh, the objective was to um, advance the knowledge of LCA in the reclaiming asphalt, reviewing the methodology, collect the, the data around the world and develop uh, LCA based criteria for reptilization. This was the plan, but was not easy to uh, to follow. Um, the action the the TTG organized a very well attended uh, a webinar on uh, on life cycle assessment with 120 connection, and uh, they set a, um, a worldwide survey to collect uh, the um, the methodology of LSAA in the retirement asphalt. The outcome are yeah, related to, to the survey uh, results and the analysis of the current practice and the, uh, one of the main uh, the, um, webinar with uh, the different presentation and develop still available in the, in the web. The last task group is probably one of the most uh, advanced concept uh, is working on the probably one of the most advanced concept in the in the field of the recycling, that is the degree of binder activation. What it means? This is a, what uh, he is. This uh, this draw show what is a hold uh, piece of asphalt after milling. We have the stone. We have the bitumen absorbed by the stone. We have the bitumen uh, in the inside of the uh, no, sorry, on the top of the after in. And it can be divided in two categories. One completely aged, like and totally inactive, and a part of the bitumen available to live in some or, or to uh, host the new bitumen in terms of diffusion. So basically, the bitumen available to be part of the binder of the recycled mixture. So the point is to understand in a rep how much is the available uh, bitumen inside of the rep, not only to save uh, new bitumen, but also to allow to have the proper mix design and the bitumen and the, the design of the amount of bitumen for a mixture, avoiding a um, wrong amount of bitumen uh, made by different availability of the, of the bitumen. Again, there is around an interlaboratory test campaign around the world going on from Europe to North America, South America, India. Uh, and um, the, idea, the objective of this interlaboratory is to uh, test um, a protocol to uh, understand uh, and to label the um, the rep in function of the amount of uh, still active bitumen, the so-called degree of binder activation. This is the uh, relation, the experimental relation uh, developed by the, um, the people in the TG, and this is the protocol. So basically, is to condition the to compact the material into uh, a different temperature in order to mobilize the 
the bitumen in a different way in function of the temperature and to allow to understand uh, what is the amount of bitumen in function of the mixing temperature uh, used in the production of the asphalt concrete. Here are some preliminary results that show that the technology is able to label to, to make and to identify difference in function of temperature and in function of the bitumen, but still there are some points that are not clear. So is uh, now the, the TG is working to understand why a bit of a wrap that makes different behavior in terms of indirect and size strength in this case, a different temperature in, at one certain point uh, has similar uh, behavior uh, than uh, another bit uh, wrap that made different uh, behavior at other temperature. Uh, again, star report and my connection are expected from that uh, committee to uh, finish the, uh, the activity. Uh, I, I start, uh, I hope that uh, uh, even if I was fast, the information uh, were clear. I am open for question and clarification in the, in the, in the notification. I would like also to finish my, uh, to add uh, a list of the activity of the TC. So one of the main activity in the as a whole TC was the dissemination of the result. So uh, we said we started with a workshop in uh, with industry. We divided people in 2016. We had uh, uh, a workshop and invited presentation in 2017 at the transportation uh, annual or the annual meeting of the transportation research board, research board of the United States in Washington DC and uh, we had also other invited pre uh, presentation at different conference and made by different association we did the, the first what we call it first industry workshop on recycling technology in Sao Paulo in, 20, in 2018 with more than 350 attendants. We had a second industry workshop uh, last year in Granada connected with the ATA conference 2018 and also again in 2018 a workshop on uh, rejuvenator technology co-organized with the European Asphalt Pavement Association and uh, we said we organized the, the symposium in conjunction with the ISAP symposium in Padova. We sent, uh, we find, uh, we made, and we sent out what we call it the first stretch of needs statement. That it basically is a document that identified uh, the open point uh, for discussion for research and the open point for investigation in the field of the um, of the asphalt recycling, we, we decided to send uh, to disseminate it uh, to LinkedIn, was before the Rylem letter that, and uh, was quite successful because we got uh, around uh, more than 2000 view in LinkedIn. Uh, again, in the, in the um, act dissemination activity, there is a special session this afternoon uh, on, on uh, asphalt recycling. Uh, this is the program. We have people from uh, uh, agency, specifically from the Department of Transport, the Nevada Department of Transportation in the United States. We have uh, uh, three of our uh, TG leader that will give an overview of uh, the different technology and the, diff and the different theoretical aspect related to asphalt, to asphalt recycling. And we have also the point of view of the uh, asphalt producer uh, that will be presented by the European Asphalt Payment Association. Everyone is welcome to attend the session this afternoon. Um, Last, uh, last kind of activity that we put together uh, is the what we call a training and education. Uh, unfortunately, this, this activity was uh, strongly affected by the COVID emergency because the idea uh, was to uh, have this course on cold recycling technology in Granada in, the, in October. 
but due to the situation uh, we decided to uh, change that instead to one uh, for a three full days uh, course we change it in a series of lecture that we uh, that we, we will start in January. The idea is, this is, my, is like an experiment. So the idea is to find another way to transfer the achievement of the uh, of the TG together with the um, knowledge and the uh, result that the academic uh, have in the hand after their research activity in the specific field and to transfer them to practitioner and agency again to, to increase the uh, the level of the of the technology the last activity that we still have to do as a tg is the last annual meeting that we will will be in the original plan was in connection with Lyon 2020, the uh, Rallym International Symposium on Bituminous Material, basically to finalize the, the plan for the state of the art report and to approve the Rallym recommendation. Probably uh, we are still waiting the, uh, the conference uh, date. Um, everything again, in fact, uh, affected by the emergency. Uh, and uh, we are um, planning to uh, approve the right of recommendation made by the different TG and uh, to set the state of the art. In conjunction, we have the third industry workshop. <coughs> to, the idea is uh, to uh, complete the overview around the world. We, were, we went in South America, we went in Europe. And using this international conference, we will try to find all the other part of the world in the workshop in order to have an idea of what the uh, um, world of the practitioner, the industry, agency, and uh, um, producer are waiting from the research, uh, the researcher, and maybe from Rylan to understand what Rylan can do uh, with. Uh, um, the different technical committee that are doing research activity on this on the specific topic of the asphalt technology and collecting all this information really, uh, from the industry uh, the plan uh, we are planning to do the what we are calling what we name it the second research needs statement industry research needs that we, that we are planning to uh, publish as a writing technical letter so uh, before to finish, I hope to be in time and not to be too fast. To be it was too fast. I would like to recognize the, the the support that I got, the very high level of support and the important support that I got from my deputy chair, Professor Shanda Bay from University of New Hampshire. So having said that, I thank you for your attention, and uh, I hope. The, that the presentation was clear, even if it was fast. And yes, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. I think it was uh, quite clear. Thank you for the overview. Very interesting work. And I'm also very happy that uh, the asphalt community agreed to organize a session during this Rylan week. Um, so you, everyone is able to see also during the Rylan week, uh, not only results on concrete, but also on the different materials that uh, are very important also within RILAM. And I can see that uh, your talk certainly attracted quite some attendees since we have more than 100 people joining us now. So this is uh, very good. Um, regarding the questions, I can see here one question for you. Um, in your view, what are the key issues and aspects to promote the increase of asphalt pavements recycling? Uh, the, mm, the, the key point, uh, in my opinion, is uh, to clarify that uh, asphalt recycling is, uh, uh, let's say, an independent technique. Um, the, the main problem is that uh, a lot of uh, testing approach, a lot of mixed design approach, are uh, technology or techniques created uh, for traditional asphalt mixture and simply transferred with some 
let's say, empirical adjustment made by the practitioner. So the key point is to uh, uh, explain this point and uh, to uh, make aware the the world, the people, the asphalt people that we needed to follow a specific war and that they have they needed to understand what's going on. Not uh, there is no everything uh, uh, solved and uh, everything uh, no no. We need new knowledge and new approach. And this is probably the and this is one of the bases that we are um, using to set the proposal for a following TC that we are discussing with uh, my colleague Shandavi. Okay, yeah, we hear that a new TC is in the pipeline, so that's uh, very good uh, news. Yes, thank you. Um, I don't think there are additional questions raised in the meantime. So I wish you also success with the parallel sessions on asphalt this afternoon and everyone is welcome there to hear more about uh, this interesting material. Well, we have one more TC presentation scheduled uh, from TC 259 ISR on the prognosis of deterioration and loss of ser serviceability in structures affected by alkali silica reactions. Though, so that's a, a second committee dealing with uh, alkali silica reactions that's also recently been closed. Uh, the TC chair, Victor Sauma, had agreed to give his lecture live, but we have not seen him yet in the list of attendees. So we are not sure if he's present at the moment and ready to present. Victor, in case you are present, can you please uh, virtually raise your hand so the organizers can identify you and promote you to panelists so you can share your presentation? I don't think we have the presenter with us at the moment. I know that for him it's quite early in the morning since he will present from the USA. So maybe his alarm was not going off at the correct time. And since we have already run like 10 minutes into his normal scheduled uh, presenting time, I think we will have to cancel this presentation and hope he will be with us on another occasion, the RILAM spring meeting of, or the RILAM, uh, the next RILAM week to present the results of his technical committee. So I'm sorry, um, I do not see the presenter being present, so this um, last presentation will be cancelled. However, there is some more interesting things um, still in the schedule. At uh, 12.30, there is a publications workshop starting, so feel free to join. Publications workshop by uh, Springer. So please, if you are interested, um, join us at 12.30 there. And then afterwards, there will, of course, be several, after the break, uh, several uh, technical parallel sessions running as well. Enjoy the conference and have a nice lunch or have a nice day. Goodbye.